see everybody's coming on, so I thought I would pop in just a little bit early to say hello. Hello, Jean. Yes, you do need to use it because this, this set is actually retiring. I can't believe it's retiring already or again or finally. I, I'm not really sure. I know we've had it for a minute and it's quite beautiful. So I hope you get a chance to play with it. Hey, Judy. Hi, Linda. Yes, it is kind of an unusual blue, but I, I liked how it I like how the flowers pop against the blue. I'm doing good, Lenny. Thank you so much for asking. Um, it is blowing a gale here. It's bright and sunny and absolutely gorgeous out. About 75 degrees, I guess, 77. And uh, But the wind is just howling. So if I, if I cut out all of a sudden, you'll know it's because a tree went down on a transformer somewhere and I'm sitting in the dark. So anyway, hopefully that won't happen. I appreciate y'all coming. And as you can probably see from the picture on the screen, we're going to be making an Easter card and using, I realize, um, with the exception of the linen thread, which is not retiring, thank goodness, because I, I just don't think I can handle a blow like that. Um, everything that I used pretty much is a retiring product. The Starry Sky and Orchid Oasis colors, um, the Daffodil Daydream stamp set, and the matching dies. There's there's way more dies than this. There's actually 24 dies and kind of a funny story that I will tell you when I get to them, but I have them all laid out so you can see the cuts that you need to make to create these cards. Hello, Mary Lou and Sharon and Tara and Mel. Hello, everybody. How about that? Let me just do a blanket. Hello, everybody. Appreciate you coming on tonight. All right, so here's the uh, the front. You can see I have done some um, heat embossing. We're going to play with the Stamparatus, which I am also devastated to say is also retiring. Um, so that is that is not a good thing, but if you do not have the Stamparatus yet, this is the time to get it, I promise. Then on the inside, I went real simple, just the uh, little border stamp from Daffodil Daydream and a pretty little butterfly. So let's go ahead and get started. We are, in fact, going to begin with the Stamparatus, and you can see that I did not, in fact, change my grid paper, so sorry, my bad. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna do sort of like you would do with a triple time. Um, and I'm going to take my card front. Well, let's see, I gotta do a little more before I get all got get, before I get all that far down the road here. We're going to take our Starry Sky card base and score it at five and a half. This part is not rocket science, this is kind of your basic old card. Hey, Carla, appreciate you coming. Oh, no power. Yeah, the Northeast is kind of getting pounded. Um, looks like another another day of worrisome weather for some folks. So hopefully everybody stays safe. That was quite the mess in Arkansas. So I, I don't I don't know, guys. It's uh, the weather outside. The weather outside is frightful. Okay, so what I've done is I've made the card base and I'm putting the whole thing in my Stamparatus, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my little doohickey there, my little doo-wop. Wait a minute, where did you go, wet thing? Where's my wet thing? Did I already get the wet thing out? Did I? Oh yes, I did, <laughs> okay. We're gonna clean this off. What we're gonna do is we're gonna practice, we're gonna do a little hinge stepping with our stamp here. All right, and I'm going to show you what we're gonna do. First, I'm going to position a piece of Orchid Oasis right there in the center. So this is a little bit reminiscent of triple time technique or double time if you want it to be that way, but that's really not what we're doing. It's just, it happens to be kind of a similar thing. And I'm gonna go ahead and adhere it with a little bit of repositionable tape runner just to keep, just to make sure everything kind of stays in place. Do you really need that? Probably not, because you can actually just use your magnets. But, you know, a ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Now, I'm going to take this stamp from Daffodil Daydream, and I'm going to set it right across there. And that looks pretty straight. But what you can do, if you want to be double sure, is pick it up. And then we're gonna ink it and stamp it. Oh goodness. Oh Janice, yeah, that's uh, that's not very good. The the tornadoes have been quite um, impressive. Uh, I'm just saying. So I'm just stamping my grid paper to be sure that my stamp is straight, and it appears to be. 
But I'm also gonna show you another little thing. Remember what we've talked about, those dark inks? They take a second to dry. So you wanna be sure to dry them off. So now let's go back and put this back in place with our magnets. Make sure it's still where I want it. It is. So we'll go ahead and ink and stamp and then we're gonna hinge step. I do want that kind of straight though. I do want it kind of straight. I'm going with straight here. <laughs> there you go, Gene. You, you and I, we can come up with a song between us. All right, so I'm just stamping there and you can see it moves, it, it uh, bleeds over onto the card front, which is what I want. And then I'm just gonna hinge step down one, okay? This is where we differ from the other positioners on the market. They don't hinge step. Okay, so we're gonna do that like that and stamp twice. And then I'm gonna clean my stamp and reposition it to catch between the two the two little doohickey dot doohickey does. The doohickey does. Alright. Alright. And you know, if it's not perfect, I think it'll be okay. I do. I really do. I think it'll be okay. And just ink and stamp and hinge and stamp and two and three and four and one and two and three and feel the burn. That's what that made me think of right then. Totally, totally not a thing, but that's what I thought of when I was doing that. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this aside for now. And this is gonna be our front and it's, it's a little different from my sample. You can see that I'm, I had everything moved down for this. Do I care? No, I don't. What I do care about though, is the fact that I did not put the second piece of Starry Sky in. That's the part I actually care about. You see, the, you see where my problem is here, people? Do you see my problem, people? You see my problem? Okay, I'm gonna show, we're gonna fix this. Let me show you how we're gonna fix this. Let me show you how we're gonna fix this. This is now going to be the inside of the card. But I do need to cut another piece of Starry Sky, so let me get a good measurement here. See, here's my problem. I had this done way early, and I had everything set up way early, and it wasn't right. So three by four and a quarter. Hang on, let me cut a piece of the Starry Sky, just a minute. And we're gonna do it again, how about that? We're gonna do it again. Do da, do da. We are gonna do it again. Do, 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 da, hey. Okay, one more time. Second time, same as the first, a little bit better, and possibly not worse. <laughs> that was just a little ditty I came up with right there. I know it. I know. I'm very funny. I, I understand how you're feeling right now. You're thinking, oh wow. It's gonna be a long video because she has not got her shiitake together at all. All right, we're gonna just pretend like the magnets are gonna do the work here. And we're gonna stamp. We'll start there and hinge from there. How about that? Try it again, because this is what it's supposed to do. <laughs> oh, I'm killing myself already. I'm just saying, guys, it's been a couple of weeks. So tonight we went out to get to pull the baby up to feed. And I guess we were just early enough that she was not right up near the gate. And the wind was making it a little hard for her to hear. And... <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'm going to fix this in a second. I'm going to have to cut another piece. I'm... It's one of those days. What can I say? All right, Annie Hooch, she apparently couldn't hear me. And so I called her and I called her. I could not see her anywhere in the pasture and the wind had been blowing all day and my brain went ballistic. I knew for certain that she had gotten, that the fence had gone down, she'd gotten out or she'd been, a branch had fallen on her and she was laying out in the pasture somewhere. So. Yeah, it's that kind of week. I'm just throwing it out there, guys. That kind of week. All right, so we're gonna stamp there and then hinge again. Some days are like that. Uh-huh, they really, really are. 
Okay, there we go. Now, I'm gonna fix my problem again. Let's see if I have, I don't have another piece. So let me cut another piece of Orchid Oasis. You know what? Third time's a charm. Three and a half by four and three quarters. I'll be right back. Three and a half by four and three quarters. Three and a half by four and three quarters. Three and a half by four and three quarters. Three and a half by four and three quarters. So I don't forget. Three and a half by four and three quarters. Mm -hmm. Better do the full one like that. Alright, I'll be right back, guys. I promise. I didn't run away screaming. You might wish I was gonna run away screaming. Okay, so here's what you sh what I should have done. Okay, let me show you what I should have done. I should have had my card front, right? And just the center piece of Starry Sky cardstock. And then we put this in the middle and it's like that. And that's gonna be good enough. We're gonna call that good enough except I really, really hate it. Can you stand it if I fix it? Can you guys? Because I just, I can't leave it like that. That's that's gonna drive me bazonkers. It's just gonna make me crazy. Not gonna be able to do it. Nope, I am not. So hang tight, third time's a charm. I promise the rest of the cards will go much easier. Surely it will. How could it go worse? You're like, oh my gosh, I am going out. I'm going out. It's okay, Karen. I have yet to make anything because I'm I'm borking it by the numbers, kids. Just borking it by the numbers. All right. Unfortunately, there were only so many sides to that card base and I was out of them, okay? All right. Now, pretend you didn't see any of the aforementioned previous stuff. N none of the previous stuff. All right, so you have your card base and you have the smaller, the smaller piece of starry sky and we'll put it in like that and then let's see where that looks like i like it i do think it's pretty good right there i'll take it for a dollar was it straight yeah it was probably straight enough okay let's try again shall we let's do that again because you know there's never too many times to stamp okay so we have one stamp hinge once and ink and stamp, and clean, and bow. Oh, I just <laughs> I had a flash to the Legally Blonde movie. Do you guys remember that movie? Okay, this one we're gonna start it here and then I'm gonna hinge up, okay? So I'm gonna start with a hinge, a place to go. Be sure you have a place to go so you do have to think it through regardless of whether I'm thinking things through. You should think things through. Oh, Carol, I am so glad you just got out of a tornado. We had one of those this morning too. And they gave us the tornado warning at 9.17 and said it was going to expire at 9.30. And actually where we were, fortunately, we were in the county that it was for, but not for, it wasn't for our area. So it had kind of already gone through. Okay. That is gonna make me happy enough to go with. I mean, you know, wouldn't you think three or four times, trying it for three or four times, I ought to be pretty happy with it. All right. So let's just go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. I'm glad you're enjoying it because it's like, oh my goodness, what in the world am I doing right now? What in the world? Make sure I, I've got them on both sides, so I need to be sure I use the right side, huh? That would about put paid to it. I think I would, ha at that point, I'd be like, y'all, I'm going to bed. Okay, that's this side. Because I have to draw the line over three huge mistakes on one video. That's that's it. There's like a, lim a limitation on how many mistakes I can make before I just put myself to bed. There we go. Okay, okay, Tammy. Now, we'll go ahead and adhere this right to the card front. No dimensionals. We're going to have a pretty thick flower um, on the front, so we don't need any more anything. Okay, see, that's how it's supposed to look right there, where you have the border without any stamping on it. Okay, all righty. Not really close, 10 to 12 miles away. You know, 10 to 12 miles 
isn't really that far <laughs> when you're talking about tornadoes. I mean, at least not in Mary's world, okay? In Mary's world, that is pretty stinking close. Okay, so let's set this aside. And here I'm gonna bring my little display board, which in some worlds would be called a piece of Starry Sky cardstock. And what I have done here is I've laid out all of the pieces that you're gonna want to cut in order to create this particular daffodil daydream bouquet. And it also will help you to see how the flowers go together. All right, so the, the grasses are pretty straightforward. Well, the leaves, they're leaves. So I have two leaves and the die cuts give you one in each direction. Okay, so that's two separate die cuts. And then I did those in garden green and then another set in granny apple green, one of my favorite color combos. And then I did the two uh, flower holder doohickey ones in granny apple green. Okay, so those are pretty straightforward. Now, to make this flower right here, you're going to want, why am I stuck? Okay, you're gonna want two of this die and two of the detailed dies that go with them, okay? Like that. And let me get my magnet out so I can gather these up and not lose any of them. So here's my funny story. It wasn't really funny, okay? It wasn't funny. It was a little funny. I pulled out my dies on my magnet and I couldn't find, I didn't see these dies right here. These dies right here make this flower. So you cut one of each of those and you make that flower, but I couldn't see them. So I counted the dies, 24 dies. Yeah, 24 dies. My label said 24 dies. I was like, okay, maybe my label's wrong. So I look in the catalog. Nope, 24 dies. So now I'm doing this. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I counted them. Got 24 dies, five times. But these dies were not here. I'm like, that can't be. So finally I looked at the actual picture and realized I had two leaves that had nothing to do with this die set. <laughs> so fortunately I was able to scour the little pictures of the dies and find out that what I had done was I had the leaves from the tulip die set on my daffodil magnet. I pulled out that and fortunately these two dies were on the tulip magnet. So I spent a little time thinking, oh my gosh, I've lost my little tiny daffodil bud and I was gonna be so bummed by that. All right, really windy. Yeah, some of the straight line, some of the straight line winds are really, uh, well, nothing is as terrifying to me as a tornado, but straight line winds can be quite scary. Okay, so we have these four pieces here, plus one of each of these little flowers, and these are in Blushing Bride. Okay, so that's gonna make one. The next flower, this one here, is the one that kind of makes people go, wait, what? So to make that one, you're gonna need one of the solid pieces, and then this weird one that looks like a Rorschach test is the, um, the detailed version, and then you need this little guy that looks like a helicopter blade. That's what I think it looks like. Or, or it looks like a snitch. It looks a little bit like a golden snitch, now that I think on it. And it has a detailed die as well. Okay, so I did all of the petals in white, and I did all of the flowers in petal pink. And lest you think that's not a real tool, uh, daffodil, I Googled it, and so I know it's true. They do have those like that. And, you know, have you ever Googled a, a flower and you see them and you're like, oh, I could make flowers that color, and you realize they're fake ones from Michaels that show up in the Google, and you're like, yeah, I don't think that's actually real. Okay, and then I cut the so sweet little butterfly all right, so let's go ahead and do a little adhering to make our flowers, and then we can adhere them to the card front, and then we'll make a sentiment, and we'll be pretty close to being done. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. I think maybe possibly I'll be close to being done. I don't know at this point. I make no promises about anything. Thanks, Carol. Yes, there are, I know, I know. The ones I saw were a little more salmon-y, so I might could have gone with Calypso Coral, but that seemed a little bold, so I, I went with the pink. Okay, now let me show you how to figure these little guys out. If you look at the, actually, let me bring a piece of cardstock back. If you look at the solid piece, you can see one petal has kind of a real straight side. 
And then if you look at the detailed piece, you'll see one of the detailed petals has a pretty straight side. Those are the two that match up like that. So if you look for that straight side, you'll get it right every single time, okay? And there is Woo, Woo from the UK. Thank you so much for coming. I'm, so, I'm very sorry you're not getting any more sleep, first off, but I'm really glad that you're spending part of your sleepless time with us over here. That's cool. And because I've made several mistakes multiple times now, the same mistake multiple times actually, which is a whole nother thing, um, you're not late at all. Okay, so we've got the straight side and the straight side, and we'll just use a little bit of liquid glue and hook those together. I kind of like these, and I can tell you, uh, all I really did was look at the <laughs> look at the sample to see, so that I would make sure I had all of the detailed pieces that I needed. Okay, and then these guys are gonna go like this. But it's kind of fun to make these little flowers. I enjoy making the little flowers, because they're so pretty. They're so pretty. All right, and then for the flower, obviously we have one solid and one detailed. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of liquid glue. Da, 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 like that. And then we just pop him on with some liquid glue. The other one we're going to um, pop with dimensionals, but this one is gonna be with just liquid glue. Okay, so let's make the next one. This one is the one again that people kind of get confused by. Now, if you look at this, the detailed one just kind of makes sense, right? Because this little stubby part goes with this little stubby part down there. It's what I call it, the stubby part. And that probably has some botanical Latin name, but I don't know what it is. So it's the stubby part. All right. And think of all the different colors you could make with this. I just think it's so fun. I really almost did pink for my detailed pieces. And when the new catalog, oh, well, we won't have this one, but when the new colors come out, I would have used um, bubble bath pink here, and I think that would have been really, really pretty. Okay, and then this just adheres right across the center of the flower, like that, okay? And then, hey Julie, how are you? Thank you, Woos, appreciate it. We're gonna make this little guy. Just a little bit of liquid glue. All right, y'all don't forget, I've got double peppermints through the fifth of the month, which is just in time for the sale prices to go active on the last chance, in the last chance area. All right, now this one, I'm going to take a bit of dimensional and I'm going to place it right there like that and then pop that flower over the top just like so. Okay, now we only have one more flower to go and then we're gonna make our bouquet, our bouquet. This is my bestest bouquet because you know why they last forever. They refuse to die, especially if you use liquid glue. If you use an inferior glue, I don't know what kind that would be, but if you did, you might discover that it doesn't last as long. Okay, so now I am going to take one of my granny apple green flower doohickeys, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of liquid glue on the, on the that little sticky down part and adhere that like so. Okay, see how that's made to fit just like that? Cool, kill, it's so kill. Cool. All right, now let's get us a card front and we're gonna lay some things out to see what we like. Now my limb fact is this little guy right here because he's the biggest and longest and I don't want him going over the top of the card. So he's gonna go down first. I'm gonna have him be right up at the top, but I want him to be a little straighter like that. And don't worry, we're gonna, just like when you put cut flowers and then put them in a vase before we get done, we're going to snip the ends off so that it gets good water. And then we're gonna go ahead and put some grass. And I'm really just kind of trying to make the grasses come together. Come together, dun, dun, over me. Okay, there we go. That was, that was my singing for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. You're welcome. I'll be here all day. 
and then we'll put like so. And then I'm gonna put the other little flower guy. Now this little flower guy, you aren't really gonna be able to tell that he's a flower guy, but he's thinner. So he, he is gonna look like a stem and not like a leaf, okay? But he's gonna go like right about there. And it's all going wonky, but that's, that's basically what we're gonna do here, okay? So let's start sticking everything down. <clears throat> yeah, I'm glad you have a generator too. There's, you know, you can deal with a lot in the daylight and when you have power. When you don't have power and or it's dark, everything gets really scary really quick. Okay, now let's go ahead and adhere this. And I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna snip my stems after I get everything assembled, okay? So let's go right here like that. Okay, and then we're gonna put a, we're gonna put this little guy that goes that direction. You can see that they go opposite, okay? So you kind of want to think about where everything is going to go. And I'm making them come down here, right there, together. That was why I sang earlier, so you probably know that now. You're like, okay, Mary, please don't sing it again. We're begging you to not sing it again. We are begging you, Mary, don't sing it again. And this leaf, I want to be sure it goes up over that flower. Because this looks like a very full and, I mean, it looks like something that your kids stole out of the garden, right? A little bit. A little bit. A little bit like that. Maybe not. I don't know. And the final garden green leaf. Go like so. And then our stem. And I'm not gonna, there's really nothing to hook to because this is not a bud. So really all I'm doing is making it so that you know that there is a stem. See the difference in the stem versus the leaves. So now you know that there's a stem. And then this little guy, he's gonna go here. This little guy is gonna go here and I want them to kind of intermingle leaves, petals petals, not leaves. And then we're going to have a sentiment. Okay, so let's go ahead and adhere these with liquid glue. I mean, really, once you get the flowers put together or do the incredibly difficult stamping, it must be difficult since it only took me 12 times. Yeah, weather is being a, a booger this week, huh? I'm, yeah. We're going to put him here, but I want that little guy up. I want that little guy up. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. Now, let's go ahead and get us a sentiment made because we're going to stamp that. And we're going to actually heat emboss it in white. Oosh, the way it's going tonight, this could be dangerous. Dangerous, 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 dangerous. All right. We're going to stamp Easter Blessings and we're going to stamp it in Versamark. Get my spin. And I just rubbed the uh, cardstock with my embossing buddy just to be sure I was not getting it. I, I would minimize the amount of extra static. And safety tip, do cover your Vers Versamark before you start getting the, getting the dip. Whoa, 10 inches of snow yesterday? Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's crazy, girl. All right, so we've got it sprinkled with our white embossing powder. And then it's gonna get a little bit noisy, guys. A little bit noisy, a little bit noisy. But this is the fun part where you get to see the, the embossing powder turn white. Let's, let's hold that down with this little guy instead of with my fingers. All right, and you just kind of hold it in place and then you can see the change taking place. It goes from dull to shiny. And that's when you know, when all of it's shiny, you know it's embossed. All right, there we go. Now, remember embossing powder when it's still hot, 
is smearable and you don't want to smearableize it. All right, guys, while this is cooling, a moment of silence for stitch rectangles, okay? I'm really not sure what I'm gonna do without you, SR. That's what I like to call him, SR. It's like his nickname. Okay, so for this one, I'm calling these the thicker, wider ones. I'm using the smallest die of the wider portion. I'm gonna cut this out right quick off camera because I don't wanna make you seasick on top of making you think, oh my gosh, we're never gonna get done. This is never gonna end. It's the never ending card. There we go. Do do do. Da dun da dun. Alrighty. Now, before we adhere that, let's go ahead and make us a double loop linen thread bow. I know, right, Faith? I'm ready. I'm already doing it a little bit because we've got so much pollen, we can't open the windows yet. So. And I just can't bring myself to turn the air conditioning on yet. It's just too early. Okay, so double loop linen thread bow. Hold the tail of your linen thread between your thumb and, and very inky forefingers. And we're gonna wrap around four of those inky fingers. One, two, three, and four. And then do four more loops, only this time around two fingers. So one, two, three, and four. And then just hold it with your thumb and pull the loops off and give it a snip. I know it, me too. They are absolutely, I think I probably use, I don't even think I ever put them away. They're just always out on my table. Stitched rectangles, Whew. Hopefully they've got some exciting thing coming down the pike like in the mini catalog. All right, so now you take these two pieces. You can see you have a loop within a loop, and that's a tail, not a loop. You have a loop within a loop. Bring the two edges together and give a twist so that you now have a figure eight. And then you take your reverse tweezers, which I know you all have, because if you've been watching me at all, you have these now. And then just take another little length of the linen thread Oh my God, you know, it must be Monday somewhere. That's, that's the only thing I can think. It's, it's Monday somewhere. Okay, so just then do two uh, simple overhand knots like that to secure everything in place. And then you're gonna ferrofaucetize it, which is just my little funny thing. It's so funny, I made myself laugh. Just pull all the loops apart, make it look all tousled. And if it's not even, Make it even, just pull them through that. You can pull them through real easy so that they're all, everything is kind of the same. This is my favorite bow ever because it's designed to look bad. You kind of want it not looking great. Okay, there we go. Okie doke. Now this little guy is gonna go right there like so. And you can use a glue dot or you can use liquid glue, certainly your choice. I used liquid glue on my sample, but due to the fact that I have now kept you here for almost 30 minutes and I'm still on the card front, I'm gonna use glue dot. So you can use whichever one you want. If you use a glue dot, uh, liquid glue, it's gonna take you a few more minutes. All right, now I'm gonna get some dimensionales. And what I'm going to do is we're gonna adhere this guy over this bow like so. So I'm gonna put some dimensionals out here and they're gonna be double stacked to get over that big thick bow. So I'm gonna put one down, one down, take the lid off, put another down and another down, and then do a little quick fit check like so. And I think I can twist that a little bit and put one more right there to get a nice, a nice sticky, nice sticky. Take the lid off, 
one more dimensional. The good news is, is we're really very close to being done with the card front after only 30 minutes. Just so you know, this does not take this long in real life. Okay, there we go. So that's what we're gonna do. So pull the lid off here, here, and here, and kind of keep your card straight so that your sentiment is kind of straight, like so. And then that really cute little butterfly, I'm gonna give him a little, a little bendy brew there. Put a little liquid glue. You are welcome, Mallory. I hope you will make those. It's the bestest, it's the bestest ever. And just so you know, linen thread is the preferred double loop bow trim. Okay, and just kind of push him on there and let him set. And then, okay, I was shocked, mystified, horrified, might I even say horrified, to discover that the champagne rhinestones are retiring. Y'all, if you don't have 77 packs of this, just get it now because they are the bestest ever. They're just the bestest color ever. I love them so much. So we're gonna put one here and we're gonna, let's see, where's a nice little medium one? Here we go, here's some mediums. I'm gonna put another medium one on here and then we'll put a couple around the field of the card like that. Just kind of stick them in, keep them up against the, against your collage. And there we go. So there's five of those pretty rhinestones. Okay, on the inside, what we're gonna do, let me be sure this is the right piece, God knows. As many times as I have now screwed up, I better do a double check of the size. Uh-huh, yes, yes. All right, I'm gonna pull out my Stamparatus again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hinge down and I'm gonna make sure I'm not getting ink everywhere. I'm gonna do a quick fit check and I'm gonna adjust the card stock instead of the stamp, okay? Because I know it's already straight. So I'm just gonna do a quick check like that. I want it just a little bit further down. I mean, obviously you could clean your stamp and put it in you know, put your cardstock in and move the stamp around. But why do that? Why, why, I say, why? Pearl Basic Jewels are retiring as well. Oh my gosh. Whew. Yeah, Julie, it does take a, ha a hot second to put the tulips together or the daffodils together, but I, they're just so pretty. I like doing it. What would be good now is if I knew where my ink was. Oh, there it is. Okay, here we go. So again, we're going to stamp in Starry Sky, like so. And we'll pull this up and while it dries, we'll get this out the way. My envelope, I don't have any DSP that I'm using and that's fine. I'm gonna take this cute little butterfly. We're gonna stamp him right here on the inner liner. We're gonna stamp him in the corner of the envelope front. And then we're gonna stamp him on the flap, like so, okay? And to color him, I'm going to use one of the retiring stamp and write markers in petal pink. And we're just gonna color his larger pieces. I was gonna maybe make the other part of him granny apple green, but that seemed not like a good idea. But if you think that would be a good idea, that would be a good thing for you to do. I actually kind of think it would be pretty. Okay, and then one more. And these do not bleed through like the blends do, so you don't have to be quite so precious with it. You can kind of get after it a little bit and color it. All right. Thank you, thank you, Shirley. I appreciate you. I'll just apologize again for the <laughs> multiple borks. Apparently my brain went on a little bit of a, of a trip right there. I don't know what we were doing. I don't know what we were doing. All right, and then we're gonna adhere this to the inside. That's an Orchid Oasis mat in case you couldn't catch it. I will miss Orchid Oasis and Starry Sky very much. 
this is almost tone on tone, but it's just different enough that you can tell that there's some other color in there. All right, guys, I so appreciate your patience tonight, but I hope if you don't have the daffodil set, please get Daffodil Daydream and the dyes that go with it because it's beautiful and it's wonderful for Easter or Mother's Day is the other sentiment in the set and you'll be ready to go. All right, guys, thanks. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Enjoy your Palm Sunday and we'll see you next week on Thursday. Thanks. Bye.